Good afternoon, everybody. This is Lunch with Casey. At 12.30, I'll be honest with you, I, there's a national real estate top producers group that, you know, I wanted to see some of their mastermind stuff. You know, all realtors talk about is how to cold call for leads. I, I don't care about that, you know. What we're going to talk today is about what I think means the most, and that is, you know, we're paid to sell listings, not to make phone calls for leads. So what we're going to talk about is the strategies of selling because things are, I can tell you that this weekend, um, you know, $4 million is at stake, you know, and whether we're going to do it right or wrong is the difference between whether you make or lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, so what I want to talk about today is a couple of things. One, I do want to go over this week what happened and how critical it is and how moving forward this is just the way the rules are going to have to be okay so the game changer that we started in 2021 is this predictive analysis so we launched four homes this weekend okay we launched four homes and let's let's just let me share the screen and we'll go on to this and i'll kind of walk you through how this how this beautiful thing works so so what we're going to talk about today is the number one tool game changer that we've got. Okay. And that is, um, and that, that number one tool is, is the predictive analysis. And I'm going to walk you through that. Right. I'm going to talk to you about the price compared to values. I had a lot of comments, a lot of agents asking me about this. A lot of sellers are interested in this. And then we're going to talk about the four phases of a listing. Right. Um, now in the last, couple months, really just throw it on, everybody will buy it. Well, but that's not normal. What's normal is a professional process of selling the house, right? I mean, we just was trying to make more money than everybody, but now coming up, it's literally gonna be on the line whether you can be able to sell your listing or not. So let's, let's take a look at the number one tool, okay? So this week we launched four houses and now, all four houses had to be tested before they went on the market. All four houses had coming soons. All four houses had that we had to look at the hit count, which is this right here. Now this tells you how many people are in the buyer pool and how many people are favoring it. Now in January and February and March, there was 800 people per house in a buyer pool. There was 60 people that were favoring it. There were 25, 30 contracts. This is off of today's list. So you see, it's not that way anymore. I mean, it's a changing, it's a changing market due to interest rates, maybe a little more competition, but I think some concern on the part of the buyers. So the buyer pools are smaller, but we go to the hit counter and we make sure we have enough people in the buyer pool and we have enough people that are favoring the account. So this number right here is the favorites. And I really have to see seven, 10, 12 favorites in order to make sure that I have enough people that can generate a bidding war. We want it sold in the first weekend. We want people to bid on this house. And let me tell you this, this, the job of this predictive analysis is to get people into the house. Just get them in the house. We can't sell a house if three people walk in. We need to have 20, 30 people walk in that house. At that point, it's up for open bid. We're professionals at negotiating contracts. We get as many people excited as we can. We work those contracts to their highest and best peak. And whatever that number is, whether it's list price or 100,000 over list price or 25 under list price, that is the value that people are putting on that home. If you have 30 people walk in, all qualified buyers, they're going to, you know, whatever the bidding ends up, that is what the house is worth. So the first tool that we look at is we look at this hit counter. It's very valuable. Then over here, Julie is a genius about sending out social media, targeting people. We're trying to target the right buyers, get them to the website to look at the website. So in this case, this is one that we just did. It said, I think that's 67. I can't see my eyes aren't that good. 6,700 people, maybe 6,800 people saw this online. There were many of them that commented on it, liked it or loved it or blah, 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 blah. 
But when it all came down to it right here, you know, and this tells us how many people love it or like it. This is a Google Analytics. This tells me how many people come to the website, how long they stay, where are they from, what city are they from, what's there. So all this analytics feeds into this document right here. So this is showing time. How many showings, how many people are coming to your house? Now, if it says, and they are allowed to schedule showings prior to launching the listing for sale. So before we launch this listing, I'm gonna to wanna to know how many people that all of this work, all of this social media, all of the Google Analytics, how many people come to see the house? If two people are coming to see the house, that's not enough. It's not gonna work, right? So if two people are coming to see the house and I have four listings now, now all four of them did not test well enough to launch at their list price. So one example, we're on for $8.99. It's an incredible house. No doubt about it. Three months ago, it sells for whatever. Goes way over $950,000. So, but it's only got two buyers. So I can't launch a house with only two buyers. So I have to go to the seller and I have to say, look, we only have two buyers. All this analytics that we're doing tells me that we are really don't have enough buyers coming to your house. We need to drop the list price to the predictive analysis says your list price should be $850,000, but we don't want 850. We want over 900. Fine. But the buyer pool is under 850 because it's not at 900, right? This is a very difficult conversation to have. It's very difficult to have this conversation with the seller because they want their house at or above that list price. And, you know, to be honest with you, the easiest thing for us to do as realtors is just say, hey, you're fine. Let's just launch the listing. Let's see what happens. Well, I know that that's the worst thing that you can do uh, is just let the listing go. And there would be three or four or five showings. They might have a contract. It might be at the list price. It might go a little over it. But the proper thing to do based on the predictive analysis is drop that price to 850. So we dropped it to 850. Sellers were nice enough to trust us. They, and I can't, I, I can't disclose what the amount is. All I can tell you is the four listings, we dropped every one of them, every one of them. One went 100,000 over list price, one went 100,000 over list price, one went at list price, and one went at $50,000 over list price. So let's just say that, you know, really, really happy, satisfied, wish we had more money, right? But, but of the houses that were listed for sale last Thursday, Friday, only 20% of them are under contract right now, only 20%. Now that number used to be 80% or 85%. It got at one point, it was 90% went under contract in that first period. 20% are under contract. Now all four of ours are under contract. 20% of those things. So what I wanna do is, I wanna go through the process of what people are gonna go through if you miss that first surge if you miss that first week right so i'm going to go through a couple charts because i know where it is it's down here and i want to get to that first okay this is what i want to get to so the predictive analysis is a game changer there's no doubt about it it's the greatest tool we have in our arsenal it tells us every day whether we're um, going out in the blind or whether we have visibility that we have enough clients coming in that are going to buy this house it is a game changer. I wish more people would do it. I think it would prevent them from launching at homes that are too high a price. Remember, 80% of the homes launched did not go under contract. So they didn't get that, that bidding war going like it used to be. So let's take a look at this. There's a right way and a wrong way to do a listing. Let's look at the four phases of the proper way to do it. So we have um, a listing is prepared correctly. It's you know, we've done our predictive analysis. The sellers have either decided to drop their price or not drop their price. But regardless, our listings 
90% are going under contract, regardless of what the market conditions are, because we know we've got buyers coming in. So 90% are going to sell. So let's say we go to number two, week two, and we don't get anybody for whatever reason. <clears throat> Again, we drive people into the house. The house has got to sell itself. The space, feature, function, updates, condition, location, lot, they've got to sell itself. So 30 buyers walk in. Whatever that price is, that's what that house is worth. So let's say we don't get a contract in that first week. Then what we have, week two is called the Monbox. Monbax. Monbax are buyers that you know didn't want to get into bidding more than they'll come on back, come on back in week two. They'll take a look at it. Maybe you might get a bidding war too. I mean, maybe two people will say, well, I didn't want to get in a crazy bidding war, but I really like this house. I'm going to put in a contract. Another person puts in a contract, highest and best offer. Before you know it, you got a $50,000 bidding war on your hands. So, so week one and week two, week two, we don't wait, just wait for the monbacks, make sure we're calling them and getting in touch with them and talking to them. But week two is the monback. Now week three is the week where we're really opening up the market to starting to market it to people that may have a home for sale, right? So if you're out buying a house and you have a home for, you know, to sell, that's called a home sale contingency. Well, when the market is really popular, you're out. You'll never get it, right? Because it's always going to be somebody with a lot of cash, nothing to sell. So you're going to lose that deal. But the house doesn't sell in those first two weeks. It's now open and we literally go out looking for people that have a home to sell. Now, let me tell you where we find them. They're not people that are out there looking right now. They lost contracts way back three months ago, four months ago, five months ago. We still have their email addresses. We know where they are. So we take this and we open it up to that group and said, we will consider a sale of home contingency, okay? So we'll consider that. We'll consider VA financing. We'll consider FHA financing. All of these things are not preferred, but in lieu of nothing, you go back and you talk, you open up your sphere of who the buyers are. In the first week, a, a VA loan is gonna get blown out. An FHA loan is gonna get blown out. And so you, sorry about that. So they're going to get blown out. So, you know, they really don't go after those first weeks. But in week three, open it up, invite them all in. And now we're just looking for contracts, right? By week four, after we've cleared the first wave, after all the monbacks have decided they're not interested in it, after we've offered it to all the contingent for sale, if it's had three, four weeks to sit and let the market absorb it and the market has taken a pass, time to adjust the price you got to adjust the price it's not it's not the marketing it's not the this it's not the that it's not the, not the. it is the pricing right so that's the time 30 days is when you have to come back it's not a ten thousand dollar reduction the buyer pools are every fifty thousand dollars now the good news is if you go down fifty thousand you're in a whole new buyer pool now you may get a bidding war out of that i can't tell you how many times back in the day that we we dropped the house from 1.6 to 1.55 soon as we got to 1.55 three buyers surfaced they bid it up to 1.6 million and we got back our 1.6 million it's just the buyer pool is fifty thousand dollars lower it's just because you drop the price doesn't mean you're going to get that price just because the predictive analysis says you need to move back fifty thousand dollars before you list doesn't mean you're going to get less money in fact, it means you're going to get more money because the bigger buyer pool, the more bidding, the higher the pricing. It's just the way it is. And I know that, you know, with as few buyers as we're going to have out there, maybe there's one contract, maybe it's full price. Maybe that's not what you're hoping for. Maybe you're hoping for more, but the market has spoken. It's just like, you know, I was talking with a seller today. He goes, you know, if it's raining outside, you just got to imagine that's just mother nature. It's raining, right? And if that's the only contract, of the 30, as long as you've got plenty of people in that house that are looking at it, then you pretty much know the market has spoken. So let's look at the wrong way to do this. And I will tell you, I'll tell you how I know this is the wrong way because um, 
we haven't seen withdrawn listings in a long time. Okay. But normally that's about 30% of our market. People will call us up and say, my house is on the market. I withdrew it. The realtor, blah, blah, blah. Can you come over and list it? Every time this is the scenario of what I hear. They go on week one. Nobody obviously is there because the house is overpriced. Let me warn sellers. And I'll go back over the graphs here in a second. Let me warn everybody that, yes, it's going like this, but it's going to go like that. So do not price where you think it's going to continue to go up that high. You must, you must adopt the fact that the prices are going to level a little and you need to test every price. Other people go, no, nah, uh, neighbor sold for 1.75. I'm going after 1.8. Put it on for 1.8. That's not what the neighbor asked for. The neighbor asked for 1.6 and got 175. If you asked for 175, you never would have got it. So there's a, there's a process of how you get that pricing. So, so let's just say the realtor goes in and the seller says, hey, I want this bigger number. So the realtor goes, sure, that's fine. I think that's, I think that's your number anyways. They put it on for the bigger number, it doesn't sell. Sometimes the realtor walk in and say, I can get you this number, right? So it doesn't happen. And then week two through six is radio silence. Why? Because they keep hearing every time they pick up the phone, why is somebody not giving us the price you said you were going to get? You said, and that's what you're going to hear. So you have radio silence. Communications are basically very minimal. About eight weeks, the realtor has enough guts to say, hey, we got to drop the price, but it's too late at that point. They may drop the price. They may drop the price, but now you're 60 days in. The uh, price per square foot has fallen. Percentage of assessment has fallen. Um, people think there's something wrong with the house. Now by week 12, the seller is frustrated. They're angry and they withdraw the listing and call Casey Sampson team where we come in and put it in the right way. We do it all over again, doing it this way. But I'm gonna tell you that as the market softens, you're gonna see a lot of this and I'll tell you the evidence. So we haven't even plotted what percentage sold versus what, what percentage withdrew. But in a normal market, 60% of the homes will sell, 40% of the homes will withdraw. And it's all because they're doing it on the wrong way. They're all over here. Now, because the only way for some agents to get listings sometimes is to tell them, I can get you a higher price. They overprice the house, you're destined for failure. If we overpriced the house, we would be destined for failure too. There's nothing I can do. I mean, I can't force people to pay more money. The magic, you know, people go, well, do your magic. Give me the bigger number. The magic is making sure we start with the biggest buyer pool, then get everybody in the house, then get the bidding war going. That is the magic, okay? So with the market going the way it is, you're going to start seeing a lot of this wrong way stuff. And, it, and it's, and it's going to start happening. So we'll go on back to listing a bunch of withdrawn houses. But I will tell you, that you really need to make sure that the predictive analysis keeps us on this right path and this is the way you go. And yes, we haven't had um, people go to Monbax in a while, right? Maybe one house out of 20, but it's coming. I'm just telling you it's coming. We're gonna do everything we can to make sure we're 90% up here, but this is the process for the rest of the group, okay? so. So let's go back now and let's take a, a look at what I talked about last week and, and how we know it's gonna be a tougher market, right? So you all know that determining whether it's a buyer or a seller's market in that specific market, remember there's 7 million markets, right? One square mile with eight different price ranges and four different sizes. So, so there's, there's an eight, $7 million combination of markets, right? So, if you look at all the Northern Virginia markets, 78% were under contract back in January, 75. You can see it deteriorating. Now we're at 53. That was a, that's a fresh number as of today, 53%. Now, in order to be a seller's market, it has to be over 60%. So Northern Virginia is now moved to a neutral market. There is no buyer market and there is no seller market. It is a neutral market. Now, in one of the homes we had this weekend, it was 25% of the homes were under contract. 
Now, what does that dictate? We got a buyer's market, right? We have buyer's market. Now that tells you how much you can push a buyer, right? If there's only one, you better be careful because you know once you fall off the cliff, that's all you got. So we, we need to negotiate different with people. Um, every negotiation is different. So we need to feel how much we can push, what we can ask, whether we can try and get some, them to bid against themselves. I mean, I will be honest with you, the week before we had two homes that only had one contract each and each buyer bid $100,000 on the house, but they were the only contract. They were bidding against themselves. So we need to really know whether we can push that button and that comes through you know, interrogating the listing agent, interrogating the lender. We need to know how much we can push you to get that 100,000 bucks. And then sometimes you push them, push them, push them. We're, at, we're as far as we could possibly get, that's it. Now it's a take it or leave it, take it or leave it. At the options that you have at that point, there's a couple things you can do. You're at a number you're not happy with, right? But that's what the market says it's worth. So you have options. You can reject and wait for another higher offer, but I will tell you it's not coming. The longer it stays on the market, the lower the prices are going to be. You could just take the house off the market and rent it. But the problem with renting it is the second you rent it, it, it moves the value of the home down at least 5%, at least. Now, if a renter damages the property, now it's worse, right? So renting may seem like an option, but I will tell you when you look at these charts that it's not a good one because now you're pushing this, the date two, three, four years down the road and in a declining market, that's not a good thing. It takes a long time for markets to recover, okay? So let's take a look. This is a 4,500 square foot house in Vienna, okay? Now, if we started here at its number of one point probably 1.145 million. That's what the home was worth back in 2010. So what I did was I plotted the CP, uh, CPI, Consumer Price Index, or inflation rate. I plotted that to that number. And this is the growth of that home, right? So if it stayed with inflation, eh, it's right about there right now, right? That's what it's selling for. These are the prices. Blue is the pricing. So you can see they're right along the same avenue here. And then all of a sudden they went up, right? Now the price is not in line with inflation anymore. And what happened next? It came back down. And then it goes under the inflation and it came back up, right? Went under inflation, it came back up. Went under inflation, it came back up. Only in 2021, 2022, we had a little pandemic and the interest rates went down and the, and the inventory was gone. And then you saw craziness, all right? This is craziness, right? So where are we now? We are $340,000 over the inflation, the value uh, adjusted for inflation. That's a 25% spread or 23% spread. So if your house is on the market right now, that number you get that's the peak number. It, it's, so let's say this seller only gets 1.725, right? Eh, well, 1.725. Well, it's lower than this, but it's definitely higher than this. So you're still way above, I mean, way above where the normal price would be adjusted for inflation, right? So let's take this out. And again, in the in 1980s, I had a, T, a radio show and I told everybody if prices go down in Northern Virginia, I'll jump in the Potomac River. And in 1991, they went down. 1992, they kept going down. So by really the middle or end of 1991, I don't remember what it was, but I found myself having to jump in the Potomac River, swim in the Potomac River. I'm not going back to the river because I'm not going to make any more predictions. But if this follows suit, if this follows suit, watch this. Okay, so the let's say the price remains stagnant 
and we get our full 8.5% inflation for the year. See how they're getting closer. Now, then 2023 comes along. Now people have a, are a little nervous that prices are going down and we get another 8% inflation. And that's what happened. See how it's gonna return? Now, I'm not gonna say that this is guaranteed to happen. All I know is when it leaves inflation, it corrects. When it leaves inflation, it corrects. Leaves inflation, corrects. Leaves inflation, corrected. Overcorrected. Now it's got to correct again. I'm not predicting that houses are going to fall, but maybe some of that premium is given back. Maybe it's not as worth as much as as some as they're going for. Maybe they're not worth as much as people are buying these houses. Now, let me explain. Are the people that bought the houses at the premium? That, no, they're not. Because look, back here, people bought it for, you know, 1.1 million, you know, even if inflation, you're at 1.6. So, so over a long period of time, homes just appreciate. So don't worry about it, right? So buyers can buy with confidence. In fact, you're probably in a better position to buy now because when you go in and negotiate, if the buyer pool is shrank, you have a better opportunity to negotiate with the seller. And don't worry about the interest rates, just try and do whatever you can again, because eventually the Fed has to drop interest rates because we'll go into a recession and then they'll need to drop the interest rate to stimulate the economy. That's when you go and do your refinance. So go for 5171 arms, go for you know, there's portfolio money at 5.1%. So get some, get some of the best rates you possibly can, but know that you're going to get a best deal when you buy, good deal when you buy, and then just refinance the mortgage when the time comes. And that'll be a couple little, little ways down the, the road. Okay. All right. So, so basically that is, um, you know, those are the things I wanted to talk about today. The number one tool by far, I, if, I, I swear, if I didn't have it, we're dead in the water. And, and it's almost like I refuse to launch a listing without the visibility of knowing where we're headed, okay? So the other one, uh, yeah, the other point I wanted to make today is that yes, our prices are way out of whack with inflation, but inflation is rising, prices will soften and they will meet somewhere in 2023, maybe late 2023. Hopefully I'll still be around here doing this <clears throat> and we'll plot that chart. Every quarter I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna plot that chart for you. So we'll see where it ends up when the time comes, right? It's just a numbers game. And then I went over the four phases of listings. Now, before that wrong side, you could be wrong and it's still gonna sell. 90% of the homes went under contract. You know, the only difference was um, if you price it lower, you're going to get a bigger bump, right? You're going to get more money. So they're all going to sell. The last two years were about how much money, extra money can we get out of these deals? And can we do it without a home inspection? Can we do it out of the So very successful. The, the left side was extremely successful on finding the buyer pool, getting them bid the living heck out of it, 200, 300,000 over list price, it doesn't matter. Get that massive price, have no home inspection, have no appraisal, good to go, right? But that was then, this is now. And it's gonna be a different world. And we need to be disciplined. Do the same thing we did. Now we're not, now we're not going for, to make the massive premiums that people were paying. Now we're making sure that it does sell it sells quickly. We get the max amount of money for it. Same theory, max amount of money for it and not slip into phase two, phase three, and phase four. We're still shooting for phase one, right? We're still looking for 90% of the houses to sell in the first week. Now, the prices as they go, the market's going to speak. The seller may be a little disappointed that, oh, you know, my neighbor sold this. I was hoping to get that. Look at the 1.44 where it should be. And then, and then look at the number that you got, 1.7. And you're going to find that you're still $270,000 over the inflation rate or the value adjusted for inflation. 
So I hope that I hope that um, I hope that helped. I hope it clears up the market. Um, do not panic. I'm going to give everybody these instructions. Do not panic. Right? If your house doesn't sell in the first weekend. Relax. Just everybody's got to relax. Right? I know what you want but it's based on expectations that were set in January, February, March, and April. That's a different market. So we need to find a buyer pool. We need to squeeze as much as we possibly can out. We need to avoid like the plague, a home inspection and, a, and financing contingencies. And get it to settlement. And that's what we're gonna do. So thank you for staying, uh, thank you for dropping by uh, lunch with Casey. Um, I'm hoping to go back to 11, uh, 11 o'clock soon, probably next, uh, next week. I'm definitely going to be doing 11 o'clock. And then the week after that is the other mastermind. I have to go watch that. So we'll probably do 11 o'clock next week, 1230 the week after that. And then I'm pretty sure I've had enough fill of, of this mastermind group and I'll go back to 11 o'clock and we'll stay there from that point on. All right. So thanks for joining me at Coffee with Casey. I hope you learned something. There are hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake. You need to be extremely calm. You need to be very strategic with how you price, how you market, how you negotiate contracts, and hopefully listening to this show can help you. You can reach me at 703-508-2535. My email is casey at caseysampson.com. If you wanna know what your house is really worth, text it to me, text me your address, Send me a quick email. I'd be happy to help. And by the way, if you have friends that are thinking about friends, business associates that are getting ready to sell their house, you really have to be careful. You need to tell them to have them call me, talk to me too, and talk to as many people as they want. But I really think this is no place for amateurs. This is no place for mistakes. They really need to have the best care that they can. So at least have them call us and we'll definitely compete for the listing. We'll see you again next week on Coffee with Casey. Bye now.